Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Healthy to be afraid to stick your hand in the fire. It's healthy to be afraid to jump out in the middle of water that's way over your head if you don't know how to swim. There's a lot of things that are healthy, and it's healthy to have a reverential fear and awe of God. Actually, I believe that we don't hear enough about the fear of the Lord. And that doesn't mean to be afraid of God. You don't have to be afraid of Him. He's not an angry God, although He can get angry. He's not angry, and He loves you, and He wants good things for you. And even when you make mistakes or you do things wrong, you don't have to be afraid of God. But that reverential fear and awe is more of a respectful fear that says God is God, He is all-powerful, all-knowing, He's completely good, and I want to respect Him enough to do whatever He wants me to do, and yes, in a right way, be afraid to not obey God. Not because He's going to beat you over the head if you don't, but just because you believe He's wise and He knows the best thing for your life, and He's trying to lead you into something that's going to be good for you, so we want to have that healthy fear, that reverential fear, of not obeying God. But then there's all kinds of wrong fears. If you look up phobias in a dictionary or you look up phobias on uh, uh, the internet, it is amazing the never-ending list of things that people are afraid of. I mean, heights and water and, I mean, the dark, the light, people. It's just, it's amazing to me. Some of the things are just really, really, really unique. and. We don't, we don't make fun of those people. We understand and we say, if you've got a unique fear like that in your life, then by all means, we want to help you overcome that. The good news is, is you don't have to live trapped in some kind of phobia that doesn't even make any sense to you. you. You don't even know how you got it or how to get rid of it. One of the things that I believe is the first steps that we can take is confessing right things out of our mouth. So instead of continuing to say, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, I'm afraid of this, start saying, by faith in God, I will not fear. I'm not afraid of this. I'm not afraid of that. You say, well, Joyce, I am afraid of it. Well, you feel afraid, but you don't have to be afraid. You see, if we know who we are in Christ, then we can be who we are in Him, even though we might feel something that is fear or guilt. You know, I can feel guilty and yet know by the Word of God that I'm not guilty. And so when I feel guilty, if I know that I've repented and I know that I've asked God to forgive me, then many times I say, you know, I really don't care how I feel because I know that I'm forgiven. And you'd be amazed what will happen in your life when you start taking some authority and you stop just bowing down to every little feeling that you have. So I really want to encourage you to get this book on living courageously. I really believe that no matter what kind of fear you have in your life, that you can get help from this book, Living Courageously. I may not discuss in detail the specific fear that you have, but fear is a principle that if you learn how to do things afraid and how to confront it, one thing is for sure, you never overcome fear by fearing. You never overcome fear by backing down or cowering under it. The only way you can ever conquer it is by going forward, facing it, and doing whatever you need to do, even if you have to do it afraid. You know how you learn how to hear from God? By experience. You know how you learn how to be led by the Spirit? You step out and find out. Oops, that wasn't God. <laughs> Whew, not gonna do that again. You know how I found out what I was called to do in ministry? I just started doing stuff. One of the first things I did was I went on the streets of downtown St. Louis with a group from my church on Saturday morning with my three little kids at the time and Dave and passed out gospel tracts, and I hated it. <laughs> didn't want to do it. Didn't like being cold. Didn't enjoy the rejection I got from people. Then I tried working in the nursery. Well, that only took two weeks, and me and the kids both knew I wasn't anointed for that. I tried cleaning my pastor's house. That wasn't cool either. Because I wasn't all that big on cleaning my own. And then I had to face the fact that I was only trying to clean his to impress him and get into his good graces. Come on now.
But then I started to teach. Man, I love telling other people what to do. That's just... <laughs> I would say I'm only joking, but really I'm totally not, so. <laughs> well, but see, if you are anointed to be a teacher, you are going to enjoy giving other people direction. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're not trying to control people. The only way we're going to find out what God is saying is to step out. You can't be afraid to take a step. You can't be so afraid of making a mistake that you won't ever do anything. The worst thing in the world that can ever happen to you is not making a mistake and everybody knowing it. The best thing to do is just say, nice and clear and boldly, I made a mistake. It won't kill you. I thought I was hearing from God, but I wasn't. I made a mistake. I was wrong. <laughs> that was the wrong thing for me to do. And then use it as a life lesson to not do that again. And I love Joshua chapter 1. First of all, he starts out in verse 2, and he says to Joshua, who was going to be anointed to take Moses' place, Moses is dead, which Joshua already knew because they'd already been mourning him for 30 days, but it was like a statement. Things are about to change. <laughs> That's over. Now we're going to do this. But Joshua didn't know what the this was yet. So now arise, get up, that's the first thing you got to do if you're going to do anything in life is get up. The first place you get up is on the inside. You get some Holy Ghost oomph. And you get up on the inside. And you have a conversation with yourself. I'm not going to lay around and be lazy and be a purposeless person all my life. God has got something for me to do. And I am tired of other people running my life. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm going to get up and I'm going to confront this fear. And I'm going to live a life that's worth living. And that is not something that anybody else can do for you. You have to do it for yourself. There's something down on the inside of every person that they will reach down and get hold of it. They can be an amazing success. But those people who will never reach down and take hold of it, there's nothing you can do to help them. So now rise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, into the land which I am giving to them. And verse 3 is just such a key verse here. Every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you. Now watch this. God's saying, look, I've already told you that land is yours. God's already decided about you. God has a good plan for you. God's already decided. He sent Christ. Who said, the thief, the devil, comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. God has already decided. We're not waiting for God to decide what our future is going to be. <laughs> I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Thoughts and plans for your welfare to do you good in your final outcome. God wants us to be confident, to be bold, to not be afraid. So God's part is already done. He said, I've given you the land. Now he says, every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread. So what's the message? It's all yours, now go take it. Well, I'm praying. I don't have anybody to help me. I have a broken past. I didn't get treated fairly in life. That's all just the devil. Just trying to keep you in that wimpy, pitiful, pathetic place where you just sit around being wounded all your life. And God's saying, get up. Get up on the inside. Get up on the outside. I've already paid for you to have an amazingly wonderful life. Now you start taking steps in faith and every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread, it's yours. God is no respecter of persons. He has no favorites. 
But I think God gets pretty excited about bold people that will not be denied. Did you hear me? Bold people that say, I am going to press in with the grace and the help of God and be all that God wants me to be. I am not going to be held back by my past. I am not going to let other people rule my life. I am not going to let what you think of me determine what I think of me. I feel faith rising. Do you have any idea what would happen in this crazy world that we live in today if everybody who calls themselves a Christian would actually get up and act like one? I mean, we'd see our country turn around. It would be so fast, it would be amazing. People would start wanting what we have instead of laughing at us and thinking we're a big joke. Let me tell you something. It's not wimpy. Being a Christian is not a crutch that you lean on. To be a real Christian in the world we live in today takes a lot of guts. And I'm not talking about just going and hiding on a church pew. I'm talking about living the life. Verse 5, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. You know, there's so many lessons in every one of these verses. I mean, he basically, I mean, can you imagine how Joshua felt being told that he was going to take Moses' place? I mean, that had to be just like, you got to be kidding. <laughs> Moses? Moses. <laughs> God never told him to go be like Moses. He said, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Do you get it? Sometimes I hear people say, I'm going to be the next Joyce Meyer. Well, I hope not. I really hope that that's not your goal is to be me or to be somebody else. If I can be a good example, I think that's great. But if you're going to want to do anything at all, say, I want to do more than she did. I love Jeremiah chapter 1, verse uh, da, 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 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, see, God talks to his people. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. <laughs> before he was even born, before he did anything right or wrong, God said, you're my man. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, if God has put his hand on you and separated you for something, you are wasting your time ever trying to do anything else and thinking you'll be happy doing it. Then said I, <laughs> ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm only a youth. <laughs> but the Lord said to me, say not, I'm only a youth. <laughs> for you shall go to all to whom I shall send you, and whatever I command you, that you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. <laughs> Jeremiah is having the same conversation with God that most people do. Moses had the same conversation with God. You got the wrong man. I'm not eloquent. I stutter. The people aren't going to believe me. On and on and on. God finally got mad at Moses. <laughs> and Moses finally got around to obeying. Jeremiah kept looking at himself. Look at verse 17. I love this. But you, Jeremiah, you gird up your loins. Now, we don't understand that phrase today because it's not something that we deal with, but it basically means to, I mean, in the, in the natural, they wore long robes, and so they, they meant to gather them all up and stick them up here where it wasn't in your way. But the spiritual side of that is to get all the doubt and the unbelief and the indecision and the fear out of your way. 
and stand up and be the person that God has intended you to be. Gird up your loins, make up your mind. Don't faint in your mind. If you need to make a decision and you've done the best that you can do to hear from God and you've waited on God and God is not saying anything, then it must mean that he wants you to do what's in your heart. Now, I know that scares some people silly. It's like, well, no, I have a word from God. <laughs> I'm just fin almost finished with this book by Dallas Willard on hearing God, and I don't think he would mind if I read a couple things out of his book. So I want you to listen to this. There will be many times in which God does not send a particular word. What then are we to do? In general, it is God's will that we ourselves should have a great part in determining our path through life. If God is not saying anything to you, then he is saying, my will for you in this case is that you decide on your own. See, you're even afraid to think that could be true. Now, you know, I, I, I learn a lot watching people. See what I say? <laughs> Is it possible that you'll make a mistake? Yeah. It could even be highly likely. But that's how we learn. That's how we learn. Learn to follow peace. Learn to follow wisdom. Use common sense. Know the word of God. Don't try to kick a door down. Press gently and see if it opens. <laughs> Don't get into works of the flesh. If you're frustrated about what you're trying to do, then maybe that's God saying, my hand is not on this. Back off and wait. But we're always waiting for angels to appear or trumpets to blast and somebody to come up and... You know, recently I was at this little function. The lady said, oh, I just got invited to come to this two hours ago, and I, I'm here tonight because you're going to have a word for me. I can't stand it when people do that to me. <laughs> I don't have like this magic button, you know, that I can just... Oh, this is what God wants you to do. And you know what? People who tell you that they do... Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't give words to people through people, but you can't go around depending on that all your life. You don't want to be doing that. And even then, any word that somebody does give you, test it. Test the fruit of it. If it doesn't agree with your spirit, then say, no, thank you. I'm not going to go to Africa because you said I'm supposed to. My will for you in this case is that you decide on your own. <laughs> Listen, God is preparing us for a life of initiative. <laughs> how, how boring would it be if we cannot be involved in our own life? If we've got to wait all the time for somebody else to... Even if it's God, we've got to wait all the time. You know, when, when kids are little, you tell them, don't do that, don't do that, do this, do this, don't do that, don't do that. You know, that would wear me out if I had to do that with my grown children now. <laughs> Come on, God wants us to know his heart and get about his business. You pray about everything. You keep your ways before God. You're ready to change anything that God tells you to change. You change plans. You change direction the moment that God tells you to. But if God isn't saying anything, which we all know is the case a lot of times. How many of you just wish God would talk more than what he does? That he would just. <laughs> Listen, I remember the first time that I heard God say in my heart. I was like, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? God, I don't know what to do. What do you want me to do? And I literally heard in my spirit, do what you want to. I was like, that can't be God. <laughs> that cannot be God. God never just lets you do what you want to. <laughs> well, let me ask you, if He's given us his heart and put his spirit in us. Then who's saying that what I really feel in my heart is not the heart of God? We have the mind of Christ. 
We do hold the feelings, thoughts, intents, and purposes of his heart. We're connected. Amen? That's what it means to be in union with God. We're hooked up on the inside, connected. We don't have to have a word all the time. We follow the Spirit. We follow peace. We follow wisdom. And thank God for those special words and conversations and directions. I get that all the time, but there's a lot of times when I don't get it. Don't even think you're going to be led by God if you don't know the word. I said, don't even think you're even remotely qualified to follow God and to think you can hear his voice if you don't know the word. This is our safety net right here, the word of God. But the word of God doesn't tell me what kind of car to buy. It doesn't tell me who to marry. It doesn't tell me if it's the right time to buy a new house. The word of God doesn't tell me these things. God lets me be involved in those things in my own life. He lets me make those decisions based on wisdom, based on common sense, based on whether or not I have peace. God wants you to be involved in your own life. Stop being afraid to make decisions. Don't be double-minded. Do everything you can to hear from God. Then if you need to decide and you still haven't heard, make a decision and do something lest you do nothing. Because in making a decision, you will either walk on water or sink. Acts 16. I want to show you how the apostles lived. And Paul and Silas passed through the territory of Phrygia. I had to ask somebody smarter than me how to pronounce that today. <laughs> then I was still getting it wrong, and he had to say, no, think of refrigerator, Phrygia. Because I would have called it Pergia. And look, God's using me. I'm not a scholar, but I got common sense. So Paul and Silas, passing through the territory of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the word in the province of Asia. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that God told them not to go? No, I believe they tried to go and it didn't work. You're like, huh? <laughs> and when they'd come opposite Mysia, they tried to go into Bithany. I'm probably crucifying all them too. But the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. They tried to go in and God didn't permit them. So they tried to do something else and God didn't permit them. And they tried to do something else and the Holy Spirit blocked them. Do you see what I'm seeing here? They didn't just go sit somewhere and wait for an angel to appear and tell them what to do. They tried to do stuff. And if God was anointing it, they did it. And if he wasn't, they backed off. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And I love this. And there a vision appeared to Paul. Love it. And then he got specific instructions for what he was supposed to do. Get your life out of park. Let's get it in overdrive. Certainly get it out of reverse. If you're supposed to be looking behind you, you'd have eyes in the back of your head, not just the front. Get your life in overdrive and start saying, I am not, I'm going to confront these fears. I've done the best that I know how to do to hear from God. I've waited on him. I've asked for his direction, and now I'm going to take a step in the direction that I believe, that I feel in my heart is right, and take a baby step. You know, you don't, you don't have to go dive off the diving board into the deep end. Just get in some wading water first, you know? <laughs> he says in this book that I'm reading, and I wholeheartedly agree with this and have been sharing this for years, that... How do people learn how to hear from God? One way and one way only, by experience. You have to just try some stuff. They tried to go here, it didn't work. They tried to go there, and it didn't work. Looks like they tried like four different places. And then, whoops, all of a sudden, Paul ended up in the right place and got that specific word from God, knew exactly what his, but what if Paul would have stayed home on his couch? Are you with me? 
Well, what are you doing, Paul? I'm waiting to hear from God. <laughs> Don't be afraid anymore. Do, you know, I'm not saying be silly. Pray, think, get advice if you want to. But make sure if you're going to ask somebody for advice that you ask somebody that's not doing already a lousy job running their own life. If you want to get counsel from somebody wise, you can do that, but most people don't even know what they're doing, let alone be qualified to tell you what to do. So let me just close with this. Are you doing nothing in fear or something in faith? Well, don't let fear keep you from living the life that God intended you to have. I believe God gets excited about bold people who are determined to step out in faith and have his very best in their life. Don't let fear hold you back. Instead, live courageously. The only way that you can overcome fear is with courage. So I would even say instead of thinking about, oh, I can't be afraid, I can't be afraid, just live every day with the attitude, I'm going to live courageously today. person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted and then they look at you get make eye contact and you smile and they read that smile and then they start smiling and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. <laughs> so what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.